Welcome to the Community Hour. My name is Fernanda Vallejo. This is my first show here. And today I have a special guest um, from the Mexican Association of Manitoba. Welcome Aline Tescujano and Pamela Salas. Aline is the president of the Mexican Association of Manitoba. And Pamela is her beautiful event coordinator. So can you please explain us a little bit more about the Mexican Association when this started? Well, thank you, Fernanda. It's such a you know great opportunity to be here with you and uh, to have the you know the space to talk about our community and all the, the things that we do. And it, it's really such a, an honor to be here with you. Thank you for having us. You're more than welcome. Thank you also for having us, and I appreciate that you can invite us for explain a little bit more about our community. Yeah, and Thanks. recently we, we celebrated the Cinco de Mayo, eh? Mm -hmm. How was the show? How was the event? Well, uh, one of the, the main goals of the association is actually to promote the culture of uh, Mexico here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we have been very fortunate that we have had such a good um, impact in the community, not only in our community, but from many other communities that have embraced our culture. That's, uh, that's really something that we appreciate a lot. And uh, she was planning the, the Cinco de Mayo. And how yeah. was it, Pam? Oh, they very funny. And we have a lot of dynamics for the kids and also for the adults. And yeah, they have in, um, a games oh, and nice. also a gift. Yeah. Good to hear. I so hear fun. you had some piñatas, eh? Yeah. Yes. And Mexican food. What kind of Mexican food did people enjoy? Well, most usually we use tacos okay. uh, with beef and a little bit sauce. And we have in a food trucks also with mini donuts and lemonades. Nice. But more usually tacos. Wow, tacos. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So when the Mexican Association of Manitoba start? So we started back in 2003. So it means that this year we will be celebrating. How many years, Pam? 20 years. Oh, wow, congratulations. <laughs> we celebrate. Yeah. yeah, it's been a lot of hard work. Like I yeah. joined when I, back in 29, 20, 29. Uh -huh. but uh, I had the pleasure to, to work with some of the, the founders of the association mm -hmm. who had you know, really put their soul and the spirit into the community and that had helped build up the, the community because it's not a, it's not an easy task right. but it's something that has to be like volunteer driven and you know it's so rewarding uh -huh. to be able to participate and to engage the community and provide those skills that sometimes we need like when you are for example a newcomer you don't have a resume right that will tell you okay I, you know what type of Canadian experience mm -hmm. do you have but if you start volunteering, like such the case of this, yeah. okay. you know, when, when Pam came, you know, you start building that the relationships, your network, but some other soft skills. And getting Canadian experience. And getting that sure. Canadian yeah, experience, absolutely. you get exposed because here in Canada, that's some of the, the what we learn and we see that volunteers are so appreciated because For of sure. all the passion and the dedication mm -hmm. that they give to the things they do. So that, that's something that is very important and the association, you know, it's like a platform to promote that opportunity for volunteering. Perfect, sounds yeah. beautiful. And what kind of programs or projects do you have for your Mexican community? Well, usually we have a lot of projects, but more uh, important for us is to build these tribe type or events, like cultural events. Mm -hmm. And the last year we have four events. Oh, wow. And yeah, and we try to follow this this program to build more events per year mm -hmm. and but this year we have two events and one of them is a pavilion okay and mm -hmm. i don't know i would yes. like to explain a little bit more but aline yeah okay. she so have more yeah we have usually well now with this cinco de mayo it was just such a you know a very huge celebration we were not expecting to have this outcome yeah. Because usually, well, in Mexico we celebrate it, but it's like a national holiday, we acknowledge it. But now uh -huh. we have seen this like a global celebration of Mexican culture, even That's more right. important here than our Independence Day, which is our main celebration, right? We got, uh, you know, interest from so many different communities, and then that, that helped us keep building on the programming. 
through the year, uh, we'll do Cinco de Mayo, we'll do our Independence Day, mm -hmm. Dia de los Muertos. As you can see, we have uh, some of the, the typical, like this one, this little doll that represents uh, that type of festivity. How do you call them? Uh, Katrina? Katrina? Katrina, the Katrina. Yeah. So this is the Katrina, the Frida Katrina. Okay. Kind of thing. We have Frida and the Katrina. But, uh, and also, when one of the, the major events that we organize is the Mexican Pavilion on the Folklorama. After COVID, you know, it has been challenging you yeah, know, for, so for sure. the, the planning, getting your volunteers and get all the ball rolling. But we are happy that you know, we are able to put together the team and that it, it will be coming this summer. Because we are a very popular pavilion. And this is like where a, a space where the Mexican community gets to know us more because of all the advertising that mm -hmm. happens. Sure. And uh, it's just so, so energetic to be at the and pavilion. And all the sponsors that you have involved in this uh, is, is the sponsor, event. the entertainment. Yeah. We have a, a, a folkloric ballet traveling from Mexico. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good show. And uh, it's an opportunity also from, from uh, the, the artists from Mexico to get exposed to an international crowd. So mm -hmm. it's also like a win-win situation for, uh, for both ends. Beautiful, beautiful to hear. And Pamela, do you feel like not only the Mexican community, but all the Latino community gets involved in this kind of show or events, like in the Cinco de Mayo? Did you have only Mexican people? or no, from, we have uh, different countries? cultures and countries. We have uh, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, okay. uh, Puerto Rico. A lot of support. A lot of support. Oh, yeah. support. Yes, our Canadian friends too. Yeah, it was also. Uh, Canadian mm -hmm. friends. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And Aline, I would like to ask you a little bit more about your background, mm -hmm. uh, about your profession. When did you arrive to Canada? Well, I came to Canada back in 2003, but I was living first in Montreal. I oh. was doing my graduate studies over there. And there was the opportunity to, to apply for a job. And I said, okay, let's give it a try. I don't know where it is. At that time, I was working in a town called Morris. Uh -huh. I said, I don't know where it's Morris, but I'll give it a try. So I applied, you know, go through the, I went through the series of interviews, and they told me you got the job. So I had to really hurry up to finish my, my PhD thesis at that time. Like I wrote it in one month. And then here I came, and I said, well, I'm gonna be there just for a couple of years, because it was a, a term position. But then those two years have become now 18. Mm -hmm. So right now I am a food safety regulatory specialist and I work for the province of Manitoba in the Department of Agriculture. Wow. So you are an <laughs> smart lady and a smart Mexican. Yeah. Thank you. We are glad to have you here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> Perfect. And Pamela, so how long ago did you arrive to, to Canada or Winnipeg? Well, I came in 2020, and I have only two years, eight months. Okay. And it's so different for me to live here, but I like it also because the Mexican Association gave me the opportunity to increase and improve my my um, English also and my background, my, my, all the students. And right now, I am studying the University of, of Winnipeg and doing some uh, volunteers inside of the university yes. and with the association. And I'm working in the province of Manitoba with Aline, that program that uh, give us uh, all the students mm -hmm. to improve more our knowledge. And I appreciate all these programs that Canadians have for us. Perfect. Aline, I hear that you are part of the Personalities Wall at the Museum of Manitoba. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, of course. Well, that was uh, really an honor to have been selected amongst many different uh, personalities from, from Winnipeg. They had, uh, well, it was a nomination process, so I was nominated and I was selected. There were 35 uh, individuals that representing from the 150 years through the history of, of Winnipeg, so it's really, uh, an honor and an accomplishment, I think, not only for, for me, but representing the, the Latino community, because you see so many different backgrounds there. For having the representation of, of our countries and our community, I think this is something important that the city is acknowledging and that we, well, I'm, I'm very thankful and I think it represents everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. Here. So Pamela, what could you tell 
to all the newcomers mm -hmm. um, about Winnipeg. How do you like oh. Winnipeg, <laughs> the weather, what they can do mm -hmm. here? Well, um, the weather, first of all. Okay. Prepare with the different uh, type of temperatures. Okay. But it's so fun here because they have a lot of activities outside, also in the winter in the, and also in the summer. Uh -huh. And I don't know how I can explain the people from here is so very friendly and I appreciate all of this because when I arrive here I feel a little bit alone, but at the second day I feel like a, a big family. Yeah. And I think that is something that I can uh, advise for all newcomers to mm -hmm. come here and enjoy the people from here and to learn a little bit more from culture like Canadians and not only for Canadians, right. uh, for another countries like Ecuador or Latin people. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's very important that we as Latinos um, Get, get in touch with other cultures, people like, as you said, I'm from Ecuador, like people from Mexico, Colombia, just to, to stay together, but it's really important also to improve our English, right? So, um, Aline, how do you like the weather here in Winnipeg? How do you like Winnipeg? Is Winnipeg friendly? It's definitely friendly. I guess that's why we call it the friendly Manitoba, right? right? <laughs> But definitely it's that sense of belonging, right? That you feel that you are welcome, that you feel integrated. Like no matter where you go, there is always a mm -hmm. smile and a helping hand. Yeah, That's, there's always yeah. someone opening the door for you mm -hmm. and yeah. closing the door until you make it then, <laughs> right? Yes. Perfect. Yes, and you know what is a funny fact? That most of Canadians, uh, when they retire, they go to Canada, uh, to Mexico, I mean, and other countries. Uh, so, in Mexico, do you find um, how many Canadians? Oh, quite a few. <laughs> like you, when, I guess when you sometimes when you talk to people, say, ah, you're from Mexico. Oh, I've been to Playa del Carmen. I've been mm -hmm. to oh Puerto Vallarta and mm -hmm. so many places. And, uh, and you know, when we have the pavilion, people feel that they are in Mexico. Because nice. we, we, we bring a piece of, of, of Mexico to, to, to folklorama. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, so. And when the pavilion is going to take place? The pavilion is taking place in San Norbert Community Center uh -huh. in the arena. Okay. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, different types of activities inside and it's a good place to have our pavilion in Mexico. Yeah, okay. um, yeah we're going to be week one of the festival. Yeah. First week. The first week, August 6th to the 12th. August 6th to the 12th, um, so people, you cannot miss it. No, with three late night parties, because yeah. we love to party, so we are going to have the extended hours. Okay. Yeah, one of those parties will have a, a live band for, for music, so nice. it's going to be like the extra <laughs> celebration. An extra celebration. Good, good to hear. So, now, Pamela, can you explain me a little bit more about your activities with the Mexican Association and also tell me why the name is Mexican? Okay, <laughs> well, no, not only I uh, coordinate events, I also help with a little bit some ideas uh, with to put in, in our all activities per year. And one of them is how can I build the the um, cultural display inside of the pavilion and we try to put in the best uh, cultural display and I'm so excited for this one. <laughs> nice. uh, I would like to say a little bit more about but I, I don't I don't want to like it's not be a surprise. surprise. Yeah. surprise. <laughs> yes. And also Mexican um, I can, Do I you can want explain. To explain. I'm, I'm more there than here, so I have more background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, please. Yeah, so, well, actually, uh, I, well, it's my understanding, because when I, I joined, they already had the, the name of the association, but it's okay. something that is very unique, because that mm -hmm. Y that you see in Mexican, the Y means and in English, uh -huh. right? So it's Mexico, Mex, E, like and, and? Canada, Beautiful. right? Beautiful. <laughs> so we're, we, with we brought a little bit of our own identity to, even though when you pronounce it, it sounds Mexican, but it's joining Mexican and, and Canada, Canada in Spanish. A little bit of Mexico here in Canada. Canada. Yeah, yeah, with the Spanish uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so when uh, were you selected as a president of this beautiful association? Well, I've been participating since 2009, and as a board of uh, as a board of directors, we get our elections. You get nominated. I've been a, a few times the, the president, and I became the past president. But you just kind of keep the ball rolling. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it's been great. The, the the group has you know really embraced that. We are documenting a lot of procedures just to can get us better organized. With, you know, with time, you need to do that just to kind of keep the succession planning because mm -hmm. I think it's important that you have a, a, like a solid foundation when you apply for you know financial support through mm -hmm. different grants. So you, you you need to start building all that credibility right. and to, to make you more efficient as well as an association, even though you are a small group of volunteers. But you know. We all, you know, participate in a professional manner. Everybody brings different skills, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is important. So for the new participants to learn and yeah. then just to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, that's right. And another important question is, from all the newcomer people, how many of them are trying to reach in the Mexican Association to get some additional help? And what kind of help are they looking for? Yeah, like most, mm -hmm. like the, the particular goals of the association, even though it's more focused on the culture, the sports, the, the, the language teaching, the dances, and, and on all that part of the culture, yeah. we do get requests that, you know, when they are coming, some type of, a little bit of help in, in set, mm -hmm. set, getting settled, right? Yeah. Sometimes, because, you know, things change. Like when we came, it's, you know, a few years back, and there are processes and things that change on how you get your driver's license yeah. and a few other things, right, that we try to provide as, as much as advice as we can. Mm -hmm. But when we don't know, we refer them to the person that actually knows or that mm -hmm. they are dedicated to that particular to uh, find the, find the resource that, that is there. I think as we, we keep on networking with the different communities, service providers, mm -hmm. and so on, you know, that helps the community when they come not to feel that isolated as well, right. right? Especially when they join in winter time, it gets a bit more complicated because it's the, the, the change even, you know, you're not used yeah. to all the weather, the clothing yeah. and everything that, that comes there, right? And uh, mm -hmm. a very important aspect that sometimes we don't talk too much about it is mental health. That's right. That, yeah. is, that is so important that they need to know not to be afraid to ask for help. Right. There are so fantastic resources out there that from even from different experiences we have had, we know and we have had mm -hmm. access to them and we appreciate that they are available for everybody. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people, if you're having a difficult time at home or passing for depression and anxiety, you guys are not alone. Don't forget that we have a lot of associations such as the Mexican Association and other community programs. And we would love to have you, all of you, involved in these activities. You are not mm -hmm. alone. We can speak in Spanish and help yeah. each other to improve more our English, yes. right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Good. And is there anything else that you would like to add about um, the Mexican Pavilion or the Mexican Association of Manitoba? Yeah, well, of course, if everybody, you know, uh, we're welcome for volunteers. It's, yeah. it's always, you know, we can, you know, be the planners and organizer when, when mm -hmm. it's time to execute. It's an activity for everybody. It's, it's the place where it, it brings us all together. Uh -huh. So people are welcome to, to join as volunteers. Anytime you have, you don't have to be for the whole week. If you can give us some mm -hmm. hours, that okay. will be great. We have awesome. um, really good perks for our volunteers. We, uh, we appreciate the help and we, we like to also share a little bit of, of something with, with our volunteers right. too, mm -hmm. right? So. On the website of the association, we have the, the registration form. So the, the website is www.mexican, with a Y, okay. mb.ca. Awesome. So there is the registration form there for volunteers. And then once we get that info, our volunteer coordinator will start assigning you know, the different areas because we have a variety of, of aspects, right? If you're an extrovert and you like to talk, you might be maybe a tourist guide at the cultural mm -hmm. display. You like to get experience in the food line, you know, you can help serve the food because we, besides serving the food, we have to do some record keeping because food safety is a priority. Right. So we, we need mm -hmm. to check that all the food that goes to the public is it's okay. So we do checks to make sure temperatures and everything is fine. And we have the bar, we have so many areas where you can come and have fun. That's ah, the important thing, really right? Fun. And get to meet people. Yeah, exactly. And don't forget to follow us. Yes. Yeah, so where? So, uh, <laughs> what, what kind of social media are you on? 
on Instagram and Facebook. How can we find you? Uh, we have an, with Mexican, like uh, with the A. The white. The white, y. sorry, and that CA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so it'll be Mexican with the Y mm -hmm. and B. Uh -huh. And then that's yeah. Facebook, or uh, so they can find us Facebook and Instagram. And Instagram. Is Mexican, for Facebook both. and Instagram. Awesome. So, ladies, I want to congratulate you for the beautiful job that you are doing for the Mexican community mm -hmm. and the Latino community for having all the people together and do mm -hmm. all this beautiful, beautiful and respectful job. Well, thank so you. So thank you so thank much you. for thank coming you. Thank thank you. today thank you. and was a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, and I, just before closing, I would like to just give a, a really heartfelt thank you to all the board of directors of the association and to all the volunteers that have participated mm -hmm. with us. It's just, you know, you, you, you get that sense of community, but when you have a fantastic team to work with, it's just amazing and then you can do so many great things for the, for the rest of the community. Perfect. Thank, thank you, you so Fernanda. much, Fernanda. Thank You're you. more than welcome. So thank you everybody for watching us today. Uh, I invite you to follow us and uh, you multicultural channel on the community hour.